Over the last several videos, we've looked at how to create conditional structures for if then, if then else, and if then else if else to provide multiple forks for application to execute based on some Boolean conditional expression. Let's do a project where we're going to use an if then else if else structure to provide a discount to customers based on the amount of, of their purchase. We'll also get some practice writing mathematical expressions. We're going to use key mnemonics to help navigate the UI, and I'd like you to create a form closing event to eliminate the possibility of the user accidentally clicking the X in the upper right hand corner and prematurely close the application. Philately is the collection of postage stamps, and a philatelist is a stamp collector. Our client in this case is Philips Philatelic. They are a seller of postage stamps and supplies to collectors, and they offer a discount based on the customer's purchase amount. They would like an application where we enter the purchase amount in the yellow box, click the Calculate Amount Due, and notice we can do an Alt-C to execute that button. And it's going to determine what the discount should be based on the amount that they spent, what that discount amount is, what the subtotal is, subtracting the discount from the purchase amount, calculating the tax at 8.7%, and giving us a total due. The discount is 5% for purchases from $50 to $99.99, $7.5 to $100 to just under $250, $250 to $499.99 is 10%, and if they purchase $500 or more, they want to give them a 12.5% discount. So our assignment is to create the application that you see here. We'll use the two-string property with the P2 to show that the discount as a percentage with two decimal places. The other four calculated amounts will be displayed with a C2 currency in the two-string. I'd like to set mnemonics of Alt-P for the purchase amount. That's going to be the label that will then coordinate to the purchase amount text box and the calculate button of alt C. And then of course as I mentioned code the form closing event to restrict the user from prematurely closing the application by displaying a message box and forcing them to, to click yes to end the application. A little tip, the, the table you see here for the purchase amount and discount is actually two different labels just side by side. And then the image of the postage stamp and the return address for the client is provided in our Canvas course site. Thoroughly test your program, and here's some sample data to test. So we're to make sure we're testing for, for a no discount, a 5%, a 7.5%, a 10%, and a 12.5%. I would suggest testing like 499.99, and then also testing 500 to make sure it distinguishes that 10% to 12.5%. And then of course you'll submit this application with your weekly reflection. Here's the application running. I put a default in a 3895. If I click the calculate amount, that's under $50, so we get no discount, assessing the 8.7% tax and a total due. But if I change this to, let's say, 8895, now I'm in that 5% discount between $50 and $100, and the amount then of 5% is $4.45. Subtotal, $84.50, tax applied, and my total. Let's change this to get that 7.5% discount. So if I make this 188.95, now I'm getting the 7.5% discount, and I see the discount amount, the subtotal, the tax, the total. The 10%, I'll go 38.95. Now I'm getting the 10% it's between the 250 and the 499. And then finally, let's make this $788 and now I'm getting the 12 and a half percent. In fact, just to test this, let's go 500, and I'm getting 12 and a half percent there, but if I go 499.99, I'm only getting a 10 percent discount. Now I can go up to the purchase amount doing an Alt P. I can type in a value there, let's just put in 300, and then I can do an Alt-C to calculate. So those are the key mnemonics, Alt-P to go to the purchase amount, Alt-C to calculate, and then if the user accidentally clicks the close button, we're asked to please confirm. If I say cancel, nothing happens. If I say no, nothing happens. But if I say are you sure you want to exit and click yes, then the application ends.
I'm going to suggest you pause the video here and try this on your own. What will follow is the code review of my solution. For the interface, I created a form that's 520 by 325 pixels and put in the text of the form Philatelic Discount as my caption on the title bar. I added a picture box. I didn't bother rename it, it's just picture box one, but I did set the image to this image available on our Canvas course site that I created with return address and a postage stamp across the top of the form. I did set the size mode to stretch image and then visually sized the picture box to be correct for my form. I have a label here. This label contains the thanks for shopping paragraph and then the first part of this column. It is one label, but then I added another label with just the discount information that's, that's over top of that. So in essence, creating a table here, the purchase amount and the discount. We've got a label for purchase amount with the text with an ampersand P for purchase to create that key mnemonic. And then TXT purchase, another label for the discount. I didn't name it. This is the discount percent. Label called LBO percent. Label for the discount amount. A label for the output called LBL discount. Subtotal label. An LBL subtotal label for the display. Tax 8.7%. And then an LBL tax label. Total due and LBL total label. I have a button named BTN Calc and its text is set to an ampersand calculate amount due and that sets up the C as the Alt C key mnemonic. I coded that button. Let's take a look at that code. So here's the code for the click event of BTN Calc. I'm going to take the purchase amount from txt purchase.txt, convert that to a double into a variable named purchase. I have a constant named tax rate which is 8 0.7% or 0.087. I did percent as a double and discount subtotal tax and total as double. Those could all be done on the same line. I wanted to set percent to a 0, 0.0, but we do set it again to zero if, if it's less than $50 for that purchase amount. So that's part of the if then else if structure. We have several else ifs. If the purchase is greater than 500, Remember, once we hit one thing that's true, everything else below it will be ignored. So I'm going to start with the highest value. I don't want to say is greater than or equal to 50 because then 500 would meet that. So we're going to start with the greater than or equal to 500. We're going to set the percent as 0.125 or 12.5%. Then our else if it's greater than or equal to 250, we'll set the percent to 10% or 0.1. If it's greater than or equal to 100, 0.075. And if it's greater or equal to 50, then we're going to set the percentage to 5%, so 0.05. Otherwise, we'll set the percent to 0. The discount's going to equal the purchase amount times the percent. The subtotal is going to equal the purchase minus the discount. And the tax will equal the subtotal times the tax rate constant. Total then equals subtotal and the tax. And then I simply display those in my labels using P2 for the percent, two string, and C2 for the formatting string for the other four. Now I also created a form closing event handler and just review I did that by going to the form going to the events and typing in confirm close for my form closing event its code then is I created a prompt are you sure you went to exit I created a title please confirm we could have done that in the message box I think it's just a little bit cleaner maybe to do that ahead of displaying the message box then I created confirm as a dialog result. That's going to tell me which button the user clicked. Confirm equals, then we have our message box that show. We're going to show the prompt, the title. For message box buttons, I chose yes, no, cancel. The only one we're going to really worry about is the yes. If they choose no, then it's not going to end. If they accidentally clicked it and they go, oh, I want to cancel, that won't do anything. But they click yes, we'll, we'll handle that. I had a me added a message box icon of the question mark. And then message box default button, I put it on the cancel button, button three. I want to make sure that they don't just accidentally click this and accidentally hit return. They're going to have to click on the yes button or tab over to it in that message box. Now, two ways we can do this. If confirm is does not equal dialog result dot yes, then e dot cancel equals true. I can do that in an if then structure. We can also do it, and I commented that out just to show we could also do it as a ternary 
e.cancel equals if confirm does not equal dialog result, we're going to set e.cancel to true, otherwise we set it to false. If we set e.cancel to true, then the form does not close. It discontinues that process, cancels it. That's my code review. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Programming Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.